Hello, and welcome to our online worship at Shiloh United Methodist Church on this All Saints Sunday. I'm Jerry Suit, the traditional worship coordinator here at Shiloh. We're glad that you've tuned in to worship with us this day. We hope you're blessed through our worship time together. And now let's invite the Lord to be with us in this time of worship. Lord, we come into your house as people seeking a heritage. We need your provision in our lives, just as you provided for your daughter Ruth, a foreigner without status. You gave her a home, a family, and a heritage. Your provision is enough. It is all we need. Bring us into your heritage and form us into your people, mighty God, restorer of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. scripture lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 25 verses 6 through 9. Now hear the lesson. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all the faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his holy word.
Welcome to this All Saints Sunday and the message, Loyalty and Hope, comes from the book of Ruth, from the First Testament. In the first chapter, these words. Then she started to return from her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. And even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they are grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where I go, or where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. And your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. And where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. And may the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said, no more to her. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God for his holy word. Sometimes we cannot escape Suffering. Affliction finds us. We may try to run from it, but we end up just running into more. Such is the case here in the book of Ruth surrounding Naomi. Naomi has been married to Elimelech. And Elimelech and Naomi have two sons. There is a famine in the land. And they must move from Bethlehem and go to a place that they heard, have heard of, Moab, because there is food there. Moab is 
not terribly distant from Bethlehem, but it is a different elevation. Therefore, rainfall might be there when it is not in Bethlehem. So, Naomi goes, and Elimelech and the two sons. The two sons marry uh, women from Moab. And there they settle in. And tragedy strikes beyond the famine. Elimelech dies. And then the two sons both die. Now we can try to figure out reasons as to why tragedy strikes. We can try to find out the reasons uh, for suffering. But even when we find reasons, there are often reasons behind the reasons of which we remain unaware. Seemingly good decisions, like moving from a land to find food, turn into something awful. Naomi later on blames God for it all, but this is simply her grief. God does not cause famine. And so, there they are left in a land with most of the family gone. Now, it's interesting, the word Naomi, that name means good, pleasant, lovely. And yet Naomi's life is anything but that. Later on in this passage, she tells her daughters-in-law to call her Mara instead of Naomi. Mara means bitter. And emptiness prevails in Naomi. There are no heirs now. She is left without help, it, it appears. And with no heirs, she cannot go back to her land in Bethlehem and retake it very easily. And so, this is a difficulty. Women in those days could not inherit land, had to come through the father or through the sons, and if not them, through parts of the clan of the family. So she determines to go back when she hears that Food is now available in Bethlehem. She travels, and the daughters-in-law go with her, perhaps to the border of Moab. And then, in her unselfishness, Naomi tells them to go back to their land and to go back to their mother's house. And that the Lord, the one true God, will deal kindly with them as they have dealt so kindly with her. Naomi understands that family should take precedence over her life as a mother-in-law. And she asks God to bless them and they do not want to leave. Now, Orpah does the sensible thing and goes home. Uh, Moab women in a um, 
Hebrew land would probably not have it very easy. But Ruth is different. She feels such a kinship with Naomi that she wants to go home with her despite being a foreigner and a widow. Loyalty is a gift, especially to the living. Ruth makes an extraordinary vow. It goes beyond the extent and boundaries of most vows in that day. She says, where you go, I'll go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, your God, my God. She is saying, I will become Hebrew. And where you die, I will die. I will be buried. She is pledging this young woman a vow to an old woman that she will live with Naomi adopt her people as the own and as her own and the god of israel shall be her god she will be buried with naomi absolute loyalty she is not going for a little while to see how it works out uh, she is pledging a lifelong loyalty of course this passage is often used in covenant ceremonies, the pledge of complete loyalty. For better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. Covenant is to en enter into commitment with God and God's people. So Naomi's name means pleasant, and the name Ruth means friend. And her life exemplifies this. She is a loyal friend to her mother-in-law. When Ruth arrives in Israel, she immediately goes out into the fields to work to get food for Naomi. Most likely, Naomi could not return to the land that was once owned by her husband, Elimelech, probably because he sold the rights of use to it to someone else. And in order to get back on the land, you would have to recover by payment the rights to use it once again. But she has no money. They're poor. They have no one to back them, and so they end up having to scrounge for the leftovers of the fields to have enough to eat. And Ruth does this for Naomi. On All Saints Sunday, we should not underestimate the power of loyalty. Loyal friendship saves lives. People can get through nearly anything if they're surrounded by people of loyalty. This is what the church is about. The church should be a covenant loyalty group. Um, we are to remain in relationship with each other. We are to go through thick and thin with each other. We're to encourage one another when we have loss, just as Ruth does with Naomi. And despite her own loss, God uses loyalty to bring hope. 
So on All Saints, we read names of people who have died. And when we read these names, think of the loyalty. We are loyal to memories, to goodness. Think of the hours spent by bedside, serving, offering what is best so someone could be more comfortable. We stay connected when maybe it would be easier to run from our pain. People are loyal to us in the midst of our pain. God is loyal to us, even when we don't deserve loyalty. Ruth is loyal to Naomi. Now Ruth will marry Boaz, a relative of Naomi. And Boaz will redeem her land, buy it back, so that Naomi can inherit the land. Boaz will marry Ruth and give a son. In fact, from this son, King David will descend. Imagine that. King David descended from a Moabite widow. And from the line of David will come the Messiah, our Lord Jesus. There is hope that comes from loyalty. There is hope when we are in covenant with each other. God has received every person and prepared a place for every one of us, for our mothers, our brothers, our sisters, our wives and husbands and sons and daughters. Today, we thank God for loyalty and hope. And God is loyal to all those who have gone before us. May we be given the gift of hope. For Jesus said, I go ahead of you to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. Amen. Let us pray together. God of glory, we gather to honor the saints of every time and place. Those you have set apart for yourself. 
we come to honor and praise your name, O God. For you reveal your mercy and your might to your faithful people in every age. So let us glimpse, even through tears, the mystery of your life-giving grace, a love that even death cannot destroy through Jesus Christ, Alpha and Omega. Amen.
what a friend we have in Jesus, his faithfulness and his goodness. And man, is he our living hope. I'm so thankful for him calling me his child. And Oh, man, I am forgiven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Guess what? That means you are too. <laughs> Receive it this day. Um, I hope you have a great week. We are so thankful that you joined us today. And, um, yeah, hope to see you in person sometime. Take care of yourselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs>